I simply want to make two points. The first of which is that those of us who voted for and campaigned for Remain should respect the result of the referendum. Some of us have tried to do that from straight afterwards, took the view that the British people had taken a decision and that those of us who are on the losing side of that argument should make the best of that, do what we regarded as the best for our country in the context of leaving. Sadly, many people on whose side I fought uh, in that referendum campaign didn't take that decision and have spent the last three and a half years trying to subvert that decision. And I have thought throughout uh, that that was sadly the wrong course uh, for them to take. And I think a lot of the problems that we've faced in politics in this country for the past few years stem from that wrong decision and the desire to continue fighting uh, the last war. So to, to, to those of, of, of my friends on all sides of the House who up to now have not accepted the 2016 decision, I would appeal that now, after this general election result, please accept the decision. Please let's move on. Please accept that that game is over. Uh, that one, of my, one of my comrades in arms in that referendum, I will of course give way to him. Forgiving way, but I do think that he's in danger of rewriting history. Those of us on this side of the House who wanted to go back to the people were not undermining democracy. More democracy doesn't undermine democracy, but I tell you what does undermine democracy, and that is a bill that is essentially an executive power grab, completely deleting all of the provisions that would have allowed for parliamentary scrutiny. Can he explain why, if he is standing up for democracy, he is happy to see a bill that is reducing democracy? Near here. I, I don't agree with the Right Honourable Lady's um, analysis uh, of this bill. But also, I would say to her, it, it is impossible to say you need a new referendum when we haven't implemented the results of the first yeah, referendum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm afraid that's been the central problem. And, and, and yeah. I would urge her and others to use all the, the energy and passion that she has at her disposal to help us as a country forge a new friendly relationship with our yeah. fellow democracies in the rest of Europe. They are neighbouring countries, they are friends, they are democracies. We should be able to establish a new and friendly relationship with them. And, and so that's my first point, is, it, is an appeal to those uh, who campaign to remain. Uh, the second is an appeal to all those on both sides of the argument, which is that we have to stop defining ourselves and each other simply as remainers or leavers. If we continue to define everyone purely by the way they voted in 2016, then we will never make progress as a parliament or as a country. The last few years have been miserable for democracy in this country. Uh, my attempt to be very brief is clearly being foiled, but yes, of course, I'll give way. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Can I just ask the Right Honourable Gentleman whether he thinks that his party's conduct in the general election is consistent with the test he just set? Yes, yes, I, 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 I do think that. And in a sense, it's less important that I think that than that quite clearly, looking at this House today, the British people think that. So uh, I, I, I don't think that's a, a, a fruitful avenue for the uh, Honourable Lady uh, to pursue. But as I was saying, the last few years have been miserable for democracy in this country. And the more we hark back, the more we fight the old battles, the longer that misery will persist. So I hope that this bill, this debate, the fact that we will have left by the end of next month means that members on both sides of the old European argument and all sides of this House take this chance to move on so that we can begin the healing process that this country desperately needs. Yeah. Yeah.